Hi, my name is David Hall from Xylem. I'm the product specialist for the electrochemistry range of products. I look after W2W and I want to try and give you a, a quick resume today. The classic analog technology that everybody and probably yourselves have been used to for a long time and how that might compare to the digital wireless technology that gives users potential advantages now. So I want to try and illustrate that in a short time frame as I can. So here we have a setup in a cabinet. This is a, a, a classic setup. Cabinet's already full of stuff. You don't have a lot of room to work. So we put a what is actually a small bench meter in the cabinet so you can see the effect of this lack of space. Uh, it would be much better if we could have an alternative way of doing things. So I'm going to show you that now. So analog compared to digital, what are the advantages of making that change? Are they worthwhile? Are they cost effective? Analog, for want of a better description, is a little bit like your old mobile phone. So data is transmitted in one direction, captured by the meter, and then stored in the meter or transferred accordingly from there. Digital is different. Digital is a two-way communication between the probe and the meter. Data is stored in the probe itself, and this gives you many advantages. But in addition to digital technology, now we have the wireless digital technology, and that adds more benefits. So what we're going to do here is set the, set the meter up from scratch, uh, as you would do if you'd received it uh, and it was brand new. So here we have the bench meter. This is a multi-9630 IDS meter. It has three connections at the back, and they're all the same. So this removes the problems that people have with different connectors, different types of probes. So if we switch the on button on, it's now telling me to connect the probe. What I have here is a pH electrode with cable. So I'm going to plug that in as instructed into the back of the meter. The meter now sees the electrode takes a moment for the reading to come up. You'll notice that there is a three little icons at the top. <clears throat> the right hand icon in red is indicating that the probe has been plugged into the far right hand side as we're looking at it um, connector. The indicator on the right hand side is the health of the electrode. This particular icon shows that this electrode is now in need of replacement. There should be three bars indicating that the probe is in good condition and the bars go down one by one until you have no bars left saying that this probe uh, should be replaced and is borderline in terms of calibration. So traditionally we think of having a pH meter or conductivity meter or dissolved oxygen meter this meter actually is a combined meter able to measure all three of those in addition redox sensitivity. So you have one meter which has three ports in the back able to measure any of those five parameters in any combination simultaneously. So I'm now going to plug the dissolved oxygen electrode into the back. The meter will now Again, search for that probe, and the probe is telling the meter what it is. And we've now got an icon that comes up. As you can see, in this case, we have three bars on the dissolved oxygen probe saying that's in very healthy condition. It doesn't require calibration. If it did, the, the icon would be flashing. So that's now we've connected two digital probes into the meter. And uh, I'm now going to demonstrate the wireless aspect of this probe. Well, now we've demonstrated the use of the digital probe connected with the cable. Now I'm going to show you how to disconnect the cable, which is very straightforward. There's a little clip there, the cable pulls off, so we now have the probe on its own. We're now going to connect it wirelessly. So in order to do that, we need to take 
a wireless transmitter. It's this little device that connects into here, pushes in, locks into place. You see the green light? Now that's now searching for the base unit, searching for the meter. You need to plug a little dongle here, an orange dongle. This goes into the back of any of the three ports in the back. So now the meter's connecting to the probe. The probe's now found the meter and we're ready to connect. So the meter is now connected to the probe in the same way that you're pairing your mobile phone to the car. Once it's done that, we just need to press the escape button here just to be able to then see what the pH reading is. It takes a few moments to make the connection. Again, you can see the icon showing the health of the probe. You have the pH measurement in the top right hand corner, it's a very small icon, you can see uh, the lifespan of the battery on the transmitter at the top of the probe. So it's pretty much full. Normally that for, for pH and conductivity and DO, the transmitter will give you uh, around eight hours of working days worth of power. The Tibidity probe around about half that amount of time because it utilizes a lot more power. So now we've connected in the same way that we did with pH, the turbidity and the conductivity probe. You can scroll between these to highlight which probe you want to have a look at. They're all color coded and those code, color codes correspond to the colors on the electrodes themselves which I'll show you in a moment. You can see that the turbidity probe is uh, healthy, it's got three bars on it, uh, it's flashing uh, to indicate that it could do with calibration. The conductivity probe doesn't have a calibration bar against it um, because this is a, a probe that rarely needs any calibration. So as we pan out we can uh, show that there's no wires. So we have the single connector on the back of the meter. Each of these probes uh, is now connected wirelessly. You can see the flashing displaying continually and that gives us a great advantage now because we don't we're not restricted to having to work around the meter so three people could effectively be using each of those probes in different parts of the laboratory as long as those probes remain within 10 meters of the bench meter for sending the signal so what I'm going to do now is take the pH electrode the one that we had physically connected earlier and walk away walk across the room to the, the cabinet where we're going to take a reading of the solution in here. So if we put it in the solution, there's a, a button in, on the top of the transmitter here, which I'm going to press to indicate the colour changes and the beep on the meter. You may not be able to hear that, but the meter's now beeped. So the reading from here has now been stored on the meter. So we'll come back across the room. Back up to select pH. If we then press recall, we can see that the Centex 940P, which is this probe, stored a reading of nine, uh, 6.942, 18.5 degrees. Today, 11.29 am and all the readings here are stored digitally can then be transmitted uh, either via limbs or you've got usb ports in the back where you can store the data and then put it into excel so quite cleverly and uh, a way of trying to identify and make sure which probe is which is the color coding so you can see we've had this beigey color display for ph and that corresponds to the little clip on the top of the probe. So we have pH, if we move that probe to one side and select turbidity. Turbidity has a similar colour, unfortunately, but gives you an, an idea. There you have a turbidity. And then finally, conductivity, green, and we have a, a green connector here. So it's a way for each individual person to have some 
uh, easy way of remembering which probe is which. The benefits of this meter is to be able to set up a long-term experiment. Rather than having the wireless adapters connected, you probably have a physical connection. Cable lengths can be from one and a half meters up to 100 meters in length. Because it's digital, you have no loss of signal, so cable length is not an issue. So in order to do this, you press the store button, hold it down there, and we have a menu there for automatic data storage. So you can select the interval, in other words, the time between each reading. At the moment, that's set to one minute, but you can set that, obviously, to less or more. Duration, 20 minutes, but that can be several days if you want to do that. And then all you need to do is press the Continue button, and then that will continue to now log, as you can see from the icon at the bottom, over that period of time. And then when the readings are stored in the memory, um, they can then be transferred to a memory stick and then into Excel accordingly. So for those people wanting to set up long-term experiments, that can be carried out. And you can obviously do that also with each of the probes and store, do that simultaneously. So when we finish working for the day, we may have been doing our measurements here with our connected uh, wireless electrode. The battery device, the sending device, needs to be charged. The easiest way of doing this is to leave it connected. We have this charging unit here which is plugged in. Two other probes you can see are in there at the moment, they're charging. Literally pop it in, same as you would do with your mobile phone. Close the connection. The green light indicates that it's charged. If there were red lights, all of these um, are currently fairly well charged, but red light would go out and the green light would come on. So this is the perfect way. Come the next day, they should be fully charged for you to be able to take out and then resume your measurements the following day for work. So that means that hopefully you don't have a situation where you come to your probe and find that it's flat. So we're back to a standard pH electrode, which most people have. This is a high quality glass pH electrode with a conical end. It's always better to use a glass electrode for, for most applications if you can. Most people choose the gel or plastic electrodes because they're more robust than glass. So uh, although it is a robust probe and can be ashed around quite a lot, we do have plastic armor that fits this electrode and any other standard pH electrode on the market. In order to do this, it's in two parts. We have a plastic part which goes on there, which then allows you entry to refill the probe. And then we have the end bit, which we screw on here. So it's just a, essentially a piece of armoring. That screws on. And once that's on, much more robust. For filling purposes, you can still fill that here. And obviously for, for use of the pH electrode, also, for storage purposes, you can take this end bit off if you want to, put it back in here and just put it into your storage solution. So it's a perfect piece of uh, protection to allow you to use a glass probe when perhaps um, sometimes they don't last too long. They also fit the digital probes. This is one uh, that we've got set up. Obviously, this could potentially be used anywhere, uh, even in the field. So we've protected it with this little bit of armor here. Ideal, and again, very, very, uh, very few companies do this type of protection for standard pH electrodes. So we have a SON device here. Uh, this allows you to be able to have three probes being used at the same time, but rather than having three cables and the probes dangling all over the place, uh, these sit nicely together and could be protected with this device. Uh, in addition, uh, there's a sensor on this device that uh, shows on the meter the depth that the sonde is. So if you wanted to use it down a borehole or in the ocean uh, with longer length than cable than we've got here, then that would then show the depth as well as the parameter measurements of the probes. So I'm now just gonna connect them. Uh, you can connect these in any order in any of the ports. They go in here. There is a, a, a small uh, little device on the side here that allows you to connect it in only one way. So 
can't make a mistake at the, more, the one way round. So these devices, straightforward, they clip in, they're obviously waterproof, officially down to a depth of up to 100 metres. These connect, push in and lock. If you didn't want to use one of these probes, you have a blanking plate you can put in, so you don't have to use all three. Once you've done that, it sits in this armoured shield with a significantly heavy weight at the end. If you do use up to 100 metres of cable, then the cable itself is very buoyant, so you need a weight to, to drag the, the whole thing down. The probe's connected. We have three probes. pH, turbidity and TDS, as we have it set on here at the moment. Following on from earlier, we now have the three probes that we were using in the laboratory connected to the sonde here, and we're going to drop this over the side and do a measurement in a fast flowing stream. So, as we put it down, we start to see the measurements appear on here. So if we come in, so you can see, we have a measurement for turbidity, then we have a measurement for pH, and then we have a measurement for TDS. So we have three probes attached, all reading simultaneously. Data is then stored and logged, and we can then download that to an Excel file later on.